My name is Maggie McAlpine, and I'm the Cyber Engagement Lead here at the Center for Threat Informed Defense, part of MITRE Ingenuity. And with me today is Douglas Santos, the Director of Advanced Threat Intelligence at Fortinet. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Douglas. My pleasure. How are you doing, Maggie? Wonderful. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, and yourself? Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so just to dive right in, as you know, Fortinet has joined the center uh, to work on the project of Attack Workbench. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how Fortinet got involved in this particular project. Sure. Uh, so I'm the person who's actually responsible for understanding the projects that are being put out uh, by the center and understanding the where does Fortinet needs help, right? So <laughs> because uh, we have so many products, right? And Sometimes, but not all, they work in kind of silos, right? They're head down, the keyboard, fixing bugs, uh, deploying features, and they don't have too much time to look out and understand what is out there that could help their job. So I saw that the MITRE spans across all of our products. Each product has their, their own place in detecting and mitigating attacks throughout the, the, the attack framework. And some they're all working separately and individually and trying to understand how a specific threat that is out there applies to their detection capability and they they pick that they develop that alone and that's it right so seeing that I was like mm, miter has this specific uh project which is basically trying to create a collaborative portal that will allow researchers and product managers to have a common tool so they could share intelligence. And I thought that well, that would be an extremely valuable project for Fortinet because of the way they work in silos most of the time. And I saw this as an absolutely amazing opportunity to break down those silos and make those guys talk. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's why I thought it was a very good idea and I got involved because I saw the value that that was going to bring to Fortinet. So I joined the, the project specifically, uh, me and my one of the guys from my team, which is actually a reverser. So it was very, very uh, valuable to us because I had a reverser and I have product managers working to see how that tool that was just being developed, we're just trying to make this, uh, this tool available how was the tool going to have to look like and behave so that it was going to be valuable for both reversers and the project, man product managers, which are going to be using that specific uh, uh, intelligence that was uh, gathered from the analysis of a specific threat in our product, uh, in our products. And it not only provides a very unique approach to responding to threats across all products, but it also standardizes the, the, the knowledge of that attack throughout all of our organization. So it's one of the most uh, interesting and most valuable projects that I see for Fortinet this year. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for that. Um, so what's the, um, you sort of already addressed this, um, mm -hmm. but I was wondering if you could dive a little deeper into the sort of mm -hmm. how you would characterize the, the broader industry challenge that Attack Workbench is addressing. In, we're, we're living in a, in a world where threats arise from, you know, everywhere, right? So mm -hmm. it, is, it is a challenge to get intelligence that is being uh, gathered from a reverser into the product in a flawless way, right? So the way the way the, the industry has been working uh, before MITRE Workbench, I see it's kind of chaotic, right? Because you have Twitter, you have Telegram, you have all these different types of sources which ha have different standards and it, it's not even a standard, right? It's just <laughs> text. And uh, it's hard for the information that is being analyzed by, uh, let's say, a security researcher to flow in a standardized, frictionless lay way into a, uh, a standard that the guy who's implementing the analytic can actually understand, right? Mm. So I, I see the, the workbench as a, as a bridge 
between all the work that the reversers are doing, all the work that the security analysts are doing, and what actually needs to be on the product. So I think that it's one of the most uh, pressing issues we have in the, in the industry is actually providing uh, a frictionless response. Uh, and to, for it to be frictionless, it has to be standardized and, and, and exchanged in a collaborative way. You know, in a sense that if a reverser identifies a new technique or even a new procedural level implementation of a technique, that can be communicated to, the, to whoever is writing the analytics. And if the person has any problems with that, there's a, there's a way in which they can collaborate. So it's incredibly valuable. And I mean, it's, now that we have the tool, it's hard to see a future without it. <laughs> So again, I feel like you, you've touched on this slightly, but how would you maybe uh, condense down how Attack Workbench solves this particular problem? Maybe how would you, you know, evangelize it as I know is part of your role to its target audience? So I always start by, because I ha that's exactly true. I have to convince people that to use specific things because it's gonna, it's gonna help them do their job better. So I start, I start, I start by, by that. I start, I start talking with the product managers, talking with the engine developers, trying to understand what are the challenges that they have, right? I don't say, oh, here's a new system, use it. That doesn't work, right? You have to actually build rapport with them, understand their pains, and actually when they open up to you and say, oh, it's very difficult to understand if, if this is actually what, what it should be. I mean, I know it stops this threat, but if it changes, how, how would I actually know what to do and who, and to actually communicate with the reversers, right? Because there's no standardized way in the industry for doing that. And if Fortinet uh, wanted to do that, you have to develop an internal system, uh, which would be maintained internally, but obviously it won't have the same features and capabilities of a product, of a project that is now open source and the whole world is collaborating on that. So I start by understanding their pains and so and and uh, offering them a way out of that pain. So basically, this is how I approach this. <laughs> so uh, going back to the Attack Workbench project, how mm -hmm. does Fortinet, how are you planning to leverage this work and how do you think it would be, you know, best applied in your in your dream scenario? Yeah, so yeah, I, the, my 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 answers are always too broad, so I feel like I'm, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so we're basically we're basically helping people who should be talking every day to actually do their jobs uh, in an easier way and more. Uh, how can I say? In a painless way, right? Because Right now, uh, what, what needs to be done is basically the reversers and the security analysts basically were writing a report. Sometimes they write a, a report in a certain way. Sometimes they write a report in a different way. And it's up to the engine guys and the, and the people who are developing the analytics to actually sift through that, understand how does that apply, create the analytics, and then run the threat to the product to see if it's detected in its entirety according to that report but it's painful for them because it's not it's not standardized and they have to communicate uh with the reverser through email or teams and that knowledge is sometimes get lost you know it's this is the real value of it so a, a collaborative platform that connects to similar words but disparate words at the same time right so and they they, they both need each other's success, right? So it's it's kind of like um, breaking down silos and making everyone play together in a way that they will find it easier to to work with. And and obviously, if everyone leaves the company, there's a knowledge base, right? So this mm -hmm. is the actual value of the, the project. For yeah, there's that continuity yeah, of yeah, yeah. Uh, knowledge, exactly. So. <laughs> Pivoting slightly from the specifics of Attack Workbench, um, 
the center, as you know, has a unique approach to collaborative R&D. Mm -hmm. What did the collaboration look like for your team on this project? Yeah, so we, as I, as I, as I told before, we, we, I was able, because sometimes it's hard, uh, it's hard to get people's agenda and interest on a specific project. But I feel like I'm doing a good job because uh, more people are, are, are interested in wider product projects and, and understanding how, how that can help their, their, their work and every day, right? So I got my reverse engineer, uh, who, who's actually an APT specialist, to join those calls to understand how would the tool would have to behave, what features would he, he would need to more easily and in uh, and more uh, in a frictionless 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 way communicate his knowledge to the the PM team. So it was very very valuable for us, and the collaboration was basically you no know, getting a reverses point of view on what did he needed on a tool, and get the PM's view on what is he expecting from that tool because it's the uh, producer and consumer both collaborating uh, and driving the, the project in a way that they would benefit the most. And I, I believe this, this uh, and uh, the Summit in the Pyramid was one of the projects in which I, we were able to accomplish that in a more uh, holistic way, I would say. Fantastic to hear. So um, with your participation in the center, how has it expanded your goals at Fortinet and how has it helped you expand upon, say, your expertise and capabilities? Wow, uh, in, a, in a lot. I mean, most of the, no, not most, but a, a, a few projects uh, on that, that were uh, proposed by the center, actually, it, is, it almost feels like your brain is actually exploding because specifically the summit in the pyramid is like, wow, some some people actually never uh, think of of a specific need, right? You just write an analytic. You know it can be evaded, but how you're you're actually gonna measure that, right? So uh, being close with the center and reviewing specific projects and participating in the calls and 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 collaborating with peers in the industry has made has made my my vision on what does threat intelligence as a community needs moving forward, right? So as I said, uh, we have different security, security vendors, we have lots of standards and uh, we need to be quicker every day in responding to those threats. And the only way to actually be, be faster in, in doing this is creating tools that, can, that will allow people to collaborate creating standards that will allow us to better understand threats such as MITRE and the attack flow and better operationalize threat intelligence uh, with uh, standards, right? So CTI Blueprints is one as well. We have TRAM, different, all of the projects that the center is doing has shifted the, the, the way that uh, I, I see what we, where we need to go and where we need to be as an industry to be able to actually change the game on the adversary. So it's it's invaluable. The work so the work you guys are doing is, are, is invaluable for sure. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I guess that just kind of brings us to our final question, which is um, as you know, the key aspect of the center's approach uh, is that as a project is completed, we make them freely available to mm -hmm. the world. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me uh, why is supporting that kind of investment in, in the community resources valuable for you and uh, Fortinet and for the larger community? Of course, yeah. So first is the thought leadership aspect, right? So having Fortinet name associated with MITRE and that project uh, signals to the community that we, we know where we need to be as a security vendor and we know what the community needs, right? So once that project is open sourced, Everyone can look at it. Everyone can propose changes, and it's the strength in numbers, right? So if you have, it's it, as I told you, it's different. I, I I would expect that at at some point in time, imagining that Miter has never existed, Fortinet would have to develop those tools. It's, it's obvious, right? But on that scenario, that tool will obviously not have as much capability, as much feature, and as more as much usefulness as it has 
if it were open source, right? So I, I am a firm believer in open source software. And uh, I mean, I think it's, it's the way forward on, on these types of, uh, of projects that MITRE is working with. Just because, you know, we had a lot, we have a lot of very, very experienced and skilled professionals in, in cybersecurity vendors, but there are other people who are equally as skilled working as independent researchers. So opening up the, the ability for those researchers to actually look at those projects, understand what they're doing, from their point of vision, from the projects that they're working, leverage that and propose new changes, new features, new workflows is, is what's gonna drive the project forward from now on. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, Douglas, and for your insights. Of course, it was a pleasure having you and having Fortna as a member of the center. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you, Mike.